Uh, let's get to the uh, next guest. Delighted to have him on. Made a real, uh, a really good impression last time. He was on former Tory MP. Uh, Tom Hunt, how are you, Tom? Very good, very good. Jolly good, good man. Um, uh, let's do a bit of Labour bashing. No, I don't mean that. Let's have an open mind. Um, so we've had seven weeks. We've given um, we've given the doctors twenty two percent. As left drivers can now drive a train for eighty one grand. Striking is going to be a lot easier. You're going to have eleven bins in some councils, so you can recycle. This is all before you get fined for taking your kid out of school. But perhaps well, not the most worrying. Um, Starmer today has backed working from home as a culture of presenteeism is bad for productivity. I didn't really understand this, I still probably don't, but it basically means that if you if you have to show up at work, really, and show your face, this does not mean that you're going to be productively good. But what he's saying is, is if you sit at home on your own, uh, you are going to be good productively. I'm going to suggest to you what I said earlier and got frowned at by several people. I'm 60 next year. We went to work to get on and we didn't leave work until we'd done it or done our best to do something extra than the next person to make us look better. I get this whole mental health thing and you've got to be home, but you won't convince me that working from home non-stop is any good for you. Tom, what do you think? I think Starmer's comments were incredibly broad brush um, and I think they were wrong. Uh, I think there can be certain instances where, you know, maybe if you come to an agreement with your employer and it needs to be a, a an agreement with your employer, maybe you could work uh, a day or day and a half from home a week and that you could be just as productive, but that should not be forced on the employer. Uh, I, I think, you know, there was one, I remember having one job I had six years ago where it was a full-on job, but the Fridays were particularly quiet. And I did sometimes think to myself, particularly if I'd been gone for a few drinks on a Thursday night, <gasps> that potentially work, work, working from home on a Friday might be a bit better. But in a general sense, going into work, a day's work, working with colleagues, going out into society, I think is very important for the functioning of society and our economy. And I, and and I, really and I think also the point is, <clears throat> like so much, national health, education systems, etc., etc. We're getting to the point where <clears throat> people are taking advantage. I know from, I said it earlier, my, my, my wife's brother uh, is, is a partner in a big um, accountancy firm, and they're starting to question why they'd spend all this money, huge amounts of money, right, to rent this office in London, and they reckon they can be more productive at home. But I do think you run the risk of people taking advantage of that because they just can't be bothered, if you want me to be honest. And I think there's also this this point that Angela Rayne has made that you know employees shouldn't be contacted out of hours. Well, you know I think I think that that's a recipe for disaster. I mean yes, you know when I've employed people, I've I've tried to be as respectful as possible, and I've really fought carefully when I've contacted them out of work hours. But sometimes if it's a high pressure job, you just need to do it, and and, and you shouldn't be got, you shouldn't be in fear of doing something that is necessary. And I think that the, the net result for all of this is that some employees just won't employ people. They'll and I think probably, also you know, you're going to get to a point where we feel, you know, that the government is trying to control yet more, whether it's what we write, what we say, what we do. It reminds me of that great Peter Kay sketch when he said, we've all had to make that Monday morning call where you go into the corridor and say, don't, shh, I'm phoning the office, and you have to go, oh, I'm not feeling, be quiet, not feeling very well today, and you put on the voice. All of that's gone. You send an email now, don't you? You can have time off. What I, just, I just worry, Tom, that we've gone too soft, really. I don't know. It's just my feeling. I I think that we want to have an economy that is growing. We want to mm. have businesses that are thriving mm. and that want to employ people. The big risk with this sort of the, this thrust of this legislation and these comments is that a lot of them are thinking this is all a bit too much trouble, um, and they won't employ. Uh, and ultimately, the, the great loser there will be people who are looking for a job. Now, a lot of people uh, that listen to this station are saying, "Well, I wish that we'd sort of known what was coming." And I keep finding myself saying. The failure for me by the Tory party is they didn't, I said it to you last time, didn't get through to people quite what a socialist government would do. We've already seen, as I've said to you, pay rises in the extreme to the doctors who still might strike despite 22%, as left drivers can now earn 31 pounds. Today, uh, Reeves prepared to scrap those winter fuel payments, energy bills to surge by 150 pounds. And how ironic. And how bad a job, I'm not being rude, did your government do that it's allowed a party to get into power under which the boat crisis has got worse in two months and energy prices are about to go up again and inflation. Now, some of that might be timing, but as I keep saying to people, are you people are surprised, Tom. Why are they surprised? That's what socialism is, right? 
Yeah, I mean, you won't see me mounting a passionate defence of the previous government and the no, campaign no. general election. But, you know, I think on the strikes, only a few days ago, the Transport Secretary was boasting, saying that, you know, she'd taken action and she dealt with the strikes, she'd ended the strikes on her own. Uh, by handing them a sometimes salary of up to eighty thousand pounds a year for driving a train, and I realise it's slightly more than pushing a button, but not much more than that. But then two days later, the, the train drivers union are saying, actually, no, 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 the strikes aren't off. There's going to be more strikes, and now we're seeing the guards saying they want a similar deal as well. That's what happens when you give these incredibly generous terms with no strings attached um, to one group, all the others wanted as well. I think this is a disaster, and let's not forget that. Keir Starmer's chief of staff, he's an MP, and the Keir Starmer's chief of staff's son got £4,000 from the train drivers union and he's, and he's got a job in the transport department. I mean, it, 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 yeah, I mean, it, all of these stories will start to come out. In basic terms, what you said about the, the, the unions being, you know, the, in many instances, they have financed the Labour Party and individual MPs. People should know that. That's all legal and above board. But every time a Labour Party has been in power in this country, they have been in, in thrall, in effect, to the Labour Party. And I don't understand. Uh, maybe it just tells you about the British people. I don't know. Maybe it goes back to your party. But if you give one group 22%, and then, by the way, the richest group, doctors, not, not your average, you know, toilet cleaners, people are going to ask for more. All of this, Tom Hunt, on the back of there's no money, and I promise you we're not going to raise taxes. Then unless you print money, how else are you going to raise that money? I think it's interesting, isn't it, um, today, a day where we've been told energy prices are going to be going up, mm -hmm. where just recently the Labour government announced that pensioners... A, a significant section of pensioners won't be getting their mm. winter fuel allowance. Why didn't Labour put it into the manifesto? Shouldn't they have been honest and said in their manifesto, you know what, we're going we're gonna to cut the winter fuel allowance for millions of pensioners, and that money that could have gone towards that, we're actually going to spend paying train drivers £80,000 a year. But, I, I mean, I, I, you won't disagree with me. That is fundamentally how poor the Tory party were. Because, in my mind, from this seat... That should have been banged home day in, day out. His acceptance that he's going to give 2.5 GDP to the military. That's easy to say. No detail at all. None whatsoever. No verification of that. VAT on, on, on schools. Kids taken out of schools going to be... The fines are going to be bigger. I, I, honestly, mate, I, in the end, I'm, not I'm personally not surprised, but I'm more surprised that people are surprised. That's what I'm surprised about. Well, I mean, I, I've been like a, I've been like a raging bull since, since during the election campaign and after the campaign. I've been so frustrated that we we let Labour off the hook on so many issues, um, uh, and I, I and I fear the country is going to have to pay a price for that. I tell you it's something though: if it goes like this, people will wise up. This government won't last more than five years. People will turn, and 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 the Liberal Democrats with seventy-two seats. What what what's what do they suggest today? Eleven recycle bins per household. Jesus God! I, I, imagine that. I mean, I want. I mean, honestly, I agree. I agree. But people will tire of the Labour Party. But unless the Conservative Party learn the appropriate lessons from defeat, select a decent leader, then we will not be in a place to capitalise on that. It might mean we get another re-elected Labour government through no enthusiasm or another political party capitalises on the weaknesses of the Labour Party. But we have a huge job to do over the next two or three months because the country is going to pay a price on immigration, on the strikes, on um, workplace practices, critical economic growth, on some of the woke stuff we're hearing, mm. on kids with special needs who are going to be taken out of independent schools because of some class war envy thing going on in the Labour Party. There's I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something now. Even you are going to fall off your chair. I've just had this breaking news in. People at home, ready for this? This, this. If you think we rant on talk, have a listen. Rail workers, this has been confirmed, are to be given special swan handling training after it emerged that more than 140 swans trespass on Britain's tracks last year. Network Rail have announced there were reports over 1,400 lots of creatures intruding onto rail lines in the 12 months at the end of March, so they've set aside quite a large amount of money to train the rail drivers and staff on how you deal with a swan that's on a rail track. 
I'm going to go and live in Cuba. I give up. Goodbye. What the hell is going on, Tom? I can't do it. So are we going to get? Are we going to get an extra thirty grand a year then to become swan handling specialists? Swan in handling to our existing SHS job? swan handling. You can imagine, and you can imagine the union rep for a certain part of a certain train company proudly displaying the badge. First aid. First aid. Relationships with other workers and swan handler. I just... Oh, hold on. The birds can become aggressive when approached and with much of the railway electrified, removing the protected species can be ta challenging. Yes, it can be challenging because you could electrocute yourself to death. Do you think this country... Um, I understand your anger and frustration with what your party did. I, I completely get it. I share it. Do you think this country is going to wise up quickly to what Keir Starmer and the socialists are genuinely about? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the vast majority of people in this country want a government that is going to be competent, decent, yeah. and responsive to where most of the country are on pressing issues. We weren't, let's be honest. The Labour government won't be. Um, I, I think it's wrong for Conservatives to look at Labour faltering and sit back and think, you know what, it's not the end of the world. We don't really need to do that much. We don't need to do much soul-searching. We'll be OK. We'll win in four or five years' time. I think it would be wrong for the Conservative Party to think that. I think there is a potential opening for us to win, despite the catastrophic nature of the most recent result, but only if we embrace where the people are. Paula in Brighton has got something for you. She said, put this to Tom. I don't believe the Conservatives wanted to win the last election. They knew that Sunak wasn't PM material. They allowed, they gave up, let Labour in, because they want us to finally see how much worse our lives are going to be under the Socialists. Interesting. Well, I, I think I think in some in some areas, for example, immigration, the culture wars, things may have to get worse before they get better. But I do think eventually they will get better. The vast majority of people in this country want common sense policies. They want immigration to be cut. They want us to do whatever it takes, not to say it, but do whatever it takes to stop the boats. And I think eventually a party on the right will deliver those policies. And it's very interesting. It's very interesting forward. what you said, and I'm not going to. I'm not trying to pressurise you. You're a friend of the station. A party on the right. The very soul of the Tory party is at, uh, at stake here. You have the one nation centrist politicians in the Conservative Party who, like Cameron, to me, not that far away from Blair, there was no difference. You then have Nigel Farage's reform that's called everything under the 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 the. the, the oh, they're, they're far right. Many people that have come on this station will tell you that what reform did was speak the very language that a right-wing Tory government for years had spoken and had stopped speaking because it tried to be all things to all people. And I think that's a very justifiable criticism, Tom. But the first thing I said when I lost my seat and the Reform Party got near 8,000 votes in my constituency, my first comment on social media was, do not blame the Reform Party do not blame people who voted reform for what's happened to me or the Conservative Party generally. Would you join reform? Certain, um, I really, I, I really, really want the Conservative Party to learn the lessons from the, from, the, from the election result that has just happened. I want us to get a leader who gets it, he can smell the coffee. I think the best thing would be to have a responsive Conservative Party. But ultimately, if if we're you know if in four, five, six, seven years' time, people like me keep on banging on their head against a brick wall. Ultimately, what am I most loyal to? The Conservative Party or, or values and this country? Your conscience, 100%. And I, I, I'm, you know, my, I've, grew, I've grown up in the Conservative Party uh, and I think, I think we can learn the lessons and actually I think the next leader will be a significant improvement. Um, but I would never rule anything out. I think it's foolish to rule anything out in politics. Don't disagree with you. It's always a pleasure. You're always very, very welcome on this station. Tom, thank you very much, Steve. Tom Hunt, former Tory MP, being very candid there and saying, look, I want the Tory party to rise from the ashes, but if I continue to bang my head against a wall for the next five years and I'm accused of being to the right for talking traditional Tory values, I don't know what I'll do.